Lucy called George to dinner. George, this is the third time I've called you. Your dinner will get cold. I'm coming. I told you I'm busy. Couldn't you wait five minutes? He was writing a message in his Rag Hunters chat group. George, Dan, Lucy is calling for dinner again. I have to go. Read what I sent you and then tell us. Dan, okay, but we all see you turning into a henpecked man. We're watching you. Dan loved to joke with his friends about their wives. George, ha ha, I haven't forgotten that day when you got the flu one night and missed bowling because Shirley wouldn't let you go out. Harry agreed with George. Harry, lol, yeah, Dan, we all know you're the big one around here. We're keeping an eye on you, too. Dan, bastards, I'll be here at midnight. Anyone who doesn't come is henpecked. George laughed and walked away. Harry was George's neighbor and married to Holly, Lucy's best friend. Dan, George, and Harry had shops in the same area, and Harry introduced Dan to George. They spent half their time not in their stores, but met to spend time together. Dan was making fun of Harry because he knew that Harry liked to do certain things to his wife, and he didn't want it to be known. He learned this from his wife, Shirley, because Harry's wife told her, and she told Dan, complaining, why won't you do it to me? Only rags do this. Harry needs to pull himself together, otherwise Dan will reveal this to George. George thought it was kind of hot, but overall he agreed with Dan. You don't have to do whatever you want, there must be boundaries. He pressed the sleep button on the computer and joined Lucy. They were high school sweethearts. In fact, he was her lover then, but Lucy didn't even know about him and wasn't particularly interested in him, even when they started dating. George fell in love with her at first sight, but it took him two years and several of her boyfriends for her to pay attention to him. To be precise, it took two years for George to work up the courage to let her know that he even existed. They were in the same class, but George was very shy. He never had a chance to talk to girls properly, and he wasn't hopelessly in love with her. She most likely wouldn't even know his name, let alone speak to him. His father, Jim, was an accountant at the time, and George grew up listening and watching him preach what it meant to be a man and live by that code. His mother was a kind woman, but weak, so she did not share her real thoughts and feelings with George if they differed from his father's opinion. But she taught him all sorts of correct things that she didn't really like. She also accepted these beliefs, considering it her duty to be as her husband, George's father, wanted. This was the right way and should not have been questioned. George learned that a man should bring food, be a support for the family, and that's it. The woman was his responsibility, including her daily activities. If a woman did something wrong, it was his fault. Father reproached mother every day, as if he was trying to set an example for George. One day, George's father was severely beaten and kicked out of the house by his Uncle Terry, his mother's older brother. Because Uncle Terry caught Jim and his wife in bed. Jim left town and they haven't heard from him since. These were traumatic events for George. But, interestingly, they did not affect his image of his father in any way. He still remained a role model for him. George understood that his father had made a mistake. He didn't care that he cheated on his mother, but him getting involved with Uncle Terry's wife was wrong. It wasn't fair to my uncle. Soon the whole family agreed that this woman of easy virtue had seduced his father, and if Jim had not left, most would probably have forgiven him. Except for my uncle, of course. Uncle Terry was determined to divorce his wife, but she somehow managed to persuade him by mentioning the children and saying that she was sorry. They moved to another city because there was no room for such women in this family. Because her uncle didn't kick her out, he became even worse in the family's eyes than Jim. They still said good things about Jim, wishing he had left. But Terry became a rag, a dog, the greatest disgrace in the history of the family. Even Terry's wife lost her place when it came to abuse and hatred. Seeing this, Terry turned into a pathetic weak person in George's eyes too. Anyway, George watched and dreamed about Lucy for a long time before he was able to say, Hi Lucy, I'm George, when they were in high school. 
he thought she might be interested in him too when Lucy smiled and replied, Hi. Another year and another boyfriend passed before George finally decided to ask her out after graduation. Lucy was a living girl. She was a sweet and very beautiful blonde with a perfect figure. Most of the guys adored her. George, of course, had little chance. But she was a good person, and George was always there when she felt bad or was worried about another broken heart. It was the only way to stay close to her. He lacked the looks and social skills to attract the attention of such a girl. In a sense, his upbringing and shyness in communicating with her played a positive role. After all, especially when he listened to her talk about problems in her personal life, his real thoughts were not what she wanted to hear. He thought she was wasting her life on these scumbags, and she needed to find a decent, real man and stop getting dirty. If she continues like this, it will be impossible for a real man to ever make her his wife. At some point, she will lose the chance to hear the words, make you a decent woman from someone worthy. And of course, this person had to be George. Interestingly, the thoughts he kept to himself became the key to her heart or mind when he expressed them at the right moment. She was going through problems with her boyfriend Tony in her senior year, and he constantly cheated on Lucy. She loved him and tried not to put pressure on him when he came up with another lie. He was one of the athletes and had many fans. Since Lucy was hesitant and hesitant to move forward until she was sure of her choice, Tony played on the side because of this. At least that's what Lucy told herself. It was her fault. He didn't particularly insist on this issue, and she was sure that he was leaving her for later for the girl he would marry but she knew that he had not refused any other beauty. Lucy saw this and suffered, trying to ignore some of it and believe him when he said over and over again that he was sorry for his mistakes. George was also watching. He hated this guy, wanted to beat him, but he was much stronger than George and had strong friends. If George had friends like that, he would beat Tony. George waited patiently, watching Lucy go through it all. He was starting to lose hope. He was a real man, the way a woman should be, devoted to the girl he loved, and she deserved a guy like George, not that bastard Tony. He never thought about a girl who wasn't attracted to him. He had no intention of making a decent woman, someone who was neither beautiful nor popular. But he was a man. A woman had to look for the stable and secure life that a man offers her. It is not a man's responsibility to be attractive, Men already have enough other duties and responsibilities. A woman should be looking for a real man and should not care about whether a man is attractive or whether she is attracted to him. All his previous attempts to find a girl ended in failure. This explained his slow and determined approach to Lucy. It was his last and only project for several years. Being too shy and unsure of himself, George ended up in the trusted friend chair next to Lucy. She told him everything, even unnecessary details about his personal life that he would not like to hear. He didn't need to know, for example, he's so strong. Or, these girls of easy virtue do not allow him to live a normal life. They probably gossip about what a good lover he is, and he, most likely, really is. But he had to endure it all. He couldn't complain because they were friends. But he was jealous and felt that Lucy belonged to him although she didn't know it, and he hated Tony for messing with his girlfriend, knowing and ignoring the fact that she wasn't. But he would be right if he ever managed to make Lucy his wife, because then Tony would be the one who had fun with his future wife. George hated the thought and had to wait without intervening. One day George managed to say, Shame on you. How do you let him treat you like this? Don't you understand how perfect you are? You deserve a real man who will treat you right. He fell silent immediately after he said this. Not because Lucy stared at him in shock, but because he hurt himself and immediately reverted to his insecure version. What he didn't know was that Lucy heard him. At that moment, she did not perceive him as a narrow-minded and narrow-minded guy, but considered him too sentimental and shy. She felt terrible that year, and these words seemed like a safe haven to her. She was not in love with George, she had never looked at him from that point of view. The ideas he expressed weren't what she was looking for in a guy. 
but this was the first moment when she thought, there is George if everything in my life goes wrong. Unfortunately, this was the only possible formula for George to be happy. Lucy had to be miserable for this formula to work. George knew that eventually she would stop being miserable because he would act like a man should. He didn't have the means to attract a woman or make her truly happy, but he knew how to offer a stable, uneventful life. Lucy broke up with Tony and kept George close to her. She continued to flirt with others, but did not have a serious relationship again after Tony. But she didn't stop looking for someone who would make her heart flutter. George and Lucy grew closer as time passed, and he became increasingly confident that Lucy would become his wife, although she did not know it. George planned to ask her out and came to her house. They were sitting in her living room, and he was trying to find the right moment and words when there was a knock on the door. Lucy opened the door and returned with Tony. George at that moment wanted Tony to die and did not understand what was happening here. George, you know Tony. Tony, this is George. Yeah, listen, Lucy, I need to talk to you alone. Tony glanced at George. What impudence, as if George was going to. He then noticed Lucy looking at him, expecting him to leave. She wanted him to leave. Well, I have to go. George stood up and left. They didn't speak for several days until Lucy called him. Hey, where are you? Why don't you call? No reason, I was busy. He wanted to ask, but couldn't. He wanted to know what happened that day and what happened next. Tony apologized for everything and said that I would be the only woman in his life. This could have ended it all for George. He hated it. He waited for her without making a single mistake, and others came after making her cry, having their entertainment on the side. And George still hoped that she would take revenge on him by throwing out this deceiver. And, oh no, I can't tell you that. I need a friend to gossip with. This did not bode well. George needed to know the truth, but he didn't want her to think he was just a substitute friend. It was already too hard for him to sit in this position. He was trying to get her to see him differently as a possible boyfriend. As if you haven't told me personal things before. He wasn't sure if he wanted to know the truth after he said those words. If you insist, he said he'd marry me after graduation. And oh, it's hard to say. Well, let's just say we sealed the deal after you left. Well, we broke it. She remembered that he might have feelings for her and stopped. George? He was crushed inside. He waited for her for so long, he never deceived her. Until recently, he had been so happy that she kept herself unspoiled, at least up to a certain point. All his dreams, plans, all the purity of this path collapsed in his head. I need to go, we'll talk later. They didn't speak for two weeks until Lucy called him again, sobbing. He cheated on me again and is now seeing another girl. He left me. George couldn't answer, but Lucy continued. And, I don't know how to say this, but I still don't have those days. What do you mean? It was not customary in George's family to talk about such things, and since he had few friends, he did not understand the full importance of her words. George, don't you understand? She couldn't believe that he was so far from understanding women's affairs, but she decided that he was simply not himself and was having difficulty following the conversation. I mean, I'm afraid I might be pregnant. Parts of George's brain and heart seemed to die at that moment. This was beyond his worst nightmares, and he couldn't do anything about it. He got angry, then he felt sad, then he felt sweat pouring down his head, and then he got angry again. But all this time he was completely confused. Oh, he came back to close some unfinished business. Now I see. He wasn't trying to be cruel. He was actually aware of what was happening out loud. What? You left him, he fixed it, and then he left you. Plus, he didn't get everything he wanted from you during the times you were together, and now he's collecting the debt. Why are you so cruel to me? I wasn't the one who got you pregnant, and I wasn't the one who moved on to the next girl. Why am I to blame? I didn't say it was your fault. I didn't expect to hear such words from you when I shared my feelings. 
She should have expected it, even if he didn't say his feelings directly, she had an idea. I loved you from day one, I didn't want anything from you, I just wanted you to be my girl until the end of time, and I waited patiently to show you that I was the one you needed in your life. But you chose to give it to the bastard for one more chance for the hundredth time, instead of giving me at least one. Now George was crying too. Lucy knew he cared about her, but she didn't know he loved her that much. Why didn't you say anything? Why did you just watch and remain silent all these years? Why didn't you fight for me? Is this how a real man behaves? This conversation was the moment when George finally won. He didn't feel happy, but it was what he wanted. If only he had spoken sooner, she might have remained untouchable. Or at least not as touched. But it was wrong, of course. If he had said earlier, she would not have responded like that. Then she wouldn't be so vulnerable and sad, and she wouldn't need George to make her feel better. Her words that he was not a real man did not hurt him so much, not at that moment. Of course, for George it was much more difficult. He had to swallow a lot of things, and he felt like he had no other choice. He couldn't stop wanting her after all this. He was just thinking about how he would deal with this. But if she actually ended up pregnant, that would be a whole different issue. He thought about it for several days and decided that they would solve this problem without telling anyone. His family would never accept this. Their son could not marry such a girl, left over from another guy. Waste material. He wouldn't have accepted it either, but it was Lucy. It was clear that he would do everything for her to become his wife, and he managed to convince himself that it was a mistake, and the pregnancy was just a technical detail of this mistake. Because Lucy felt hurt and spoiled in some way, she decided to stay away from anything that could hurt her again. When she found out she wasn't pregnant, she decided to settle for less. George was lesser in many ways. He couldn't offer what made life truly wonderful. But on the other hand, he was there for her, even when she might have been pregnant. He was the lesser romantically and socially, but she didn't see anyone who was more reliable which was the quality she needed most at that moment. She needed a stone, and George became it. After a couple of years, she began to find peace in her relationship with this somewhat boring man. There were no big crises, just minor annoyances like George's comments about what she wore or how she talked to other people. It was easy for her to accept such small sacrifices wouldn't hurt anyone. George's family asked him to take over his uncle's store because his grandfather could no longer manage it. George knew this place, and it brought in good income. An agreement was reached with other family members, and George became the owner of the store, with the provision of sharing the profits. Lucy was enrolled in a local college, but dropped out after two years because George kept telling her that she didn't have to work, that he would take care of her. He couldn't stop insisting that she would enjoy life with him and their future children. This life was not what she had planned, but she knew that with George, her life would be very different from what she expected. She wanted to get a diploma, but George was able to convince her. It was the first major sacrifice she made for him. But George's real motives were deeper than just his idea of a married wife. He was afraid that their relationship wouldn't last long if she went on to college, even though he was local. A lot of guys were running after her, and at some point they might have confused her. Even if they were able to stay in a relationship until after college, all the successful guys would come after her when she went to work. She was very attractive. George didn't want her to work. He justified himself that it was not selfish, that it was for her own good, because in the end she would regret it. Lucy was prone to making mistakes. George never accepted the fact that she was only with him because she had lost the motivation to look for a more suitable person for herself. A person who would be more attractive, fun, empathetic, and definitely not boring. She lost the desire to take risks in life. When they finally married, George escalated the tone of his comments. In the second year of marriage, Lucy heard him say, I have made you a decent woman, despite your stupid decisions in the past. You've already proven that you have limited decision-making abilities, so listen to what they tell you. These words hurt her. It hurt her to hear this from a man who only found courage after marriage. He's no match for her. 
she was much smarter than him, and if he had not interfered with her, she would have long ago been able to achieve more than he could have imagined. Her mistake was loving the wrong person. Her heart betrayed her. Her other mistake was allowing this man to become her husband, whom she did not love, respect, or appreciate. She had no work experience and did not have a diploma to find a decent job. At such moments, she cursed herself for not finishing college. If she did, he wouldn't be able to talk to her like that. Even if he could, she would leave him without hesitation. It seemed to her that she had fallen into a trap that he had set for her and was forced to adapt to such a life. To avoid further insults, she tried her best to do as they say. That day was the day Lucy realized that dropping out was his plan to keep her. Not making her love him, not treating her the way any woman deserved. His pathetic plan was to take away her opportunities. They had no children, and they did not know the reason. But one day, during an argument, George told her that the reason was that her worn-out female organs were not working as they should. There was nothing Lucy could do to avoid this insult, since it had nothing to do with listening to what is said. It was a deep-rooted and old, rotten feeling inside George. This was his flawed essence speaking. Lucy had only slept with another man once in her life before she started dating George. The day she heard those words was the day she realized that George was not a man at all, let alone a real man. On the other hand, she knew that he still loved her madly and could not imagine life without her. Thinking about it was the only way for her to continue to tolerate this marriage. But George could not forget the past and his feeling that he had been a backup option for her for many years. Sometimes his low self-esteem would take over and he would act as if he was taking revenge for those times. When George joined Lucy at the table, he said, This soup is cold. What's wrong with you? Why didn't you warm it up again before calling me? He acted like this every time he spent too much time on the computer. She heated up the soup and tried to start a conversation while he was busy eating. So what do you do on the computer all day? He looked at her as if she still wouldn't understand even if he explained. Although he was not half as smart as Lucy, he was the head of the family and therefore believed that he knew better. I'm helping the community. One day I'll tell you I'm too tired today. He still loved her because she was still very beautiful. In fact, she treated him the way he had once dreamed of. But he could not get rid of the feelings associated with the past. He justified his actions by saying that he had a certain role and he had to fulfill it correctly. He was going to do his duty as the man of the house without showing her too much intimacy. Women tend to perceive this as weakness in men. He knew this because his father taught him this way of looking at life. They finished eating, and George got up and went to the bedroom. Darling. Lucy didn't want to go there that evening. She wasn't in love with him, and she didn't feel his love when she had sex with him, especially when he was in this mood. She did not feel any closeness at such moments. Other times she could tell that he admired her based on simple signs. He was not a good lover. He knew nothing about intimacy or the art of love. Moreover, he had irritating words and actions, probably the result of cobwebs in his head that had been lodged there tightly and rottenly since childhood. Lucy was unhappy. In fact, she didn't feel any attraction to him, but it was her life, and she tried her best to make peace with it in order to feel satisfied. He fulfilled his husband's rights on her in a short time and kissed her at the end showing that he was still a caring husband. She appreciated the kiss because up until that moment she had felt uncomfortable, as if she was being used or forced. She was afraid to protest or suggest anything, and as a result she had sex in its most boring and meaningless form. This kiss helped her convince herself that he loved her, he just didn't know how to show it. This was a different version of her relationship with Tony. In that case, at least she felt emotions, attraction fun, excitement, romance, jealousy, anger, and even hatred at times. She would trade her marriage for any two of these feelings. Of course, at least one of them had to be positive. She missed the emotions. It was no mystery why such marriages lasted for years. The reasons for this boiled down to one fact. Such wives simply had no other options. 
they couldn't trust anyone, their ability to survive had been taken away by their own husbands or fellow fathers. They were under siege from families, their husbands or their own. They didn't have to find their husbands attractive. They might love them if they made them feel valued. Lucy would not hesitate for a second if she met a decent man who would offer her an alternative life. She was no longer so afraid to take risks. But of course, she needed a reason to leave. Without a reason, she wouldn't even think about it. She was so used to such a life, having stopped asking unnecessary questions. It was as if she was under anesthesia like a prisoner, like many other wives or perhaps even husbands experiencing the same feelings. When George sat down at the computer again, Lucy was thinking about all this. She said, I'll go see Holly, I'll be back soon. I don't like it when you go out in the evening. Next time, meet during the day. Yes, George, bye. She wished her marriage was one where she could call him Georgie instead of the dry George. She couldn't remember when or how quickly he changed to this. He wasn't much of a fine to begin with, but the current version of him was even tougher. She dreamed of a marriage where they could have fun together instead of going to Holly's alone. George, so how, he wrote. It didn't take long before the first answer came. Dan, what a moron he is. George, really? I told you so. George felt proud, as if he had found a pearl for their group. Harry, yes, this one deserves special treatment. Harry also joined the conversation. Dan, did you wash your mouth, Harry? Dan continued to tease him. George, okay, I'll message the other guys on the site. Tell them to criticize his writing and his grammar. You can attack his personality directly. George wrote, Harry, yeah, it's been a while since you used that line with the previous story, but it fits this time. I'll find something. Harry was the softest of the three, but he also enjoyed what they were doing. Harry, that dude froze his account after that, lol, he added. Dan, George, I think you should be a little harsher. He's already used that phrase in a story. This story is very similar to our first target. I'll ask him if he can figure out who had sex with his wife that night. He was with her. How do you like that, Harry? Dan was getting more and more irritated with Harry. George, what is this conversation between you? What did I miss? Finally, George caught on to the problem. Harry, no idea. Harry began to suspect something. Dan, anyway, we'll talk later. I have manly duties, you know. Dan wrote and left the network. Two years ago, Dan told the others about a site with sex stories that he was reading late at night. George really liked it. Harry became interested too. Soon they began to spend a lot of time there. One day Dan called George. Dude, are you on that site? Yes. There was a new story. Some guy wrote about how his wife cheated on him and he forgave her. Who reads this? That's not the point. He found out that maybe she was with him a couple of times right after her lover. How is this possible? George? Yes, I'm listening. Dude, don't tell me you do that too. I actually liked it, but after what you said, I probably lost my appetite. George, only wimps do that. If you serve your wife, she will consider herself superior to you. You cannot control a woman who feels that way. Dan was deceiving himself. He was far from controlling his wife, but she allowed him to act macho in front of his friends. You may be right, but that's not the case with Lucy and I. We do everything during sex. Oh, George and his idea of what everything means. Yes, I get it, but don't do it. Women think differently. They give meaning to things you don't even notice. It could lead her astray. I know what you mean. By the way, I noticed that several normal guys were insulting this wimp under his story. Great. I figured out how to do it, and there is a rating system. I wrote to one of these guys. He said that they attack these wimps in groups, give them the lowest ratings so that their stories end up at the bottom of the list. No one will read that with low scores. Wow, great idea. This will teach them. Yes. Otherwise, people will think that cheating on wives is a normal thing. 
the same as having sex with other people's wives. They should suffer for it, too. I'll call Harry and we'll write comments, too. The other guys will say the same if they see stories like this. Great, send me the link. They started doing it and enjoyed it. They couldn't believe the writer of that story. His wife cheated on him, and he forgave this woman of easy virtue, as George called her, just like his uncle Terry. What a rag it was, they thought. As if that wasn't enough, this idiot posted it all on the internet for everyone to see, and there were many like him. It occurred to them that this was a social problem that was spreading. They began to consider themselves fighters for social morality. Their wives also spent time together, which allowed them to avoid unnecessary questions like, where have you been? Who is she? In their opinion, all three couples were in a safe circle. Three old-fashioned families, no risk. Over time, they became smarter in their comments and assessments. If the scores were too low, or if they wrote the same comments, others realized that it was to their advantage. Of course, they themselves did not think of this. They couldn't come up with anything or offer a reasonable solution. They barely understood what they were reading. One day, one of the site's users thanked Dan in the comments to one of the stories, Hey, DDDDD man, thanks. I will keep an eye on your comments. Dan was very proud when he responded to this comment. You're welcome, brother. Thank you. They came to their senses when that user replied, Yeah, I only read stories that are attacked by idiots like you and your friends. Lol. After that, they decided to write comments more slowly. They were in no hurry to give low marks and insults and acted more carefully. The day after that mocking comment, Dan started leaving reviews on long and boring stories to get that bastard to waste his time reading this crap. It was surprising that he came up with such a plan. Of course, that user didn't follow Dan. He just ignored all the low ratings and made fun of Dan when he saw his comments. To that guy, Dan and everyone else like him didn't matter. He believed that they were all the same, primitive and pathetic. All they had was a fear of someone having sex with their wife and a hatred of everything that reminded them of this. From the point of view of Dan and the others, this user was one of those who was taking revenge on them because they may have offended him in some way. Maybe he was a friend of the author of the story or the guy who slept with that author's wife. When George came back online late that evening, Lucy complained to Holly that her husband was acting even more pride than usual and that they no longer spoke or went out together. Holly said in support of Lucy that her marriage to Harry wasn't much different. Holly was Harry's wife. However, Harry was not quite like the others. The thing is, Holly was a little bigger than he could handle. He had no chance to tame her or suppress her in any way. In their house, she played more of the role of a man. But Holly never showed it. She didn't want Harry to feel inferior in front of his friends. She was the only one of the three wives who loved her husband and was happy with her marriage. Harry also liked to make big statements, but it was a little different than Dan's. Harry was a real prude, but he just couldn't apply his beliefs around Holly. Holly could make Harry talk. She was not shy about interfering in his affairs or getting into his computer. She knew almost everything about him, which means she knew about others too, since she read all their messages in the chat. I hate this site, they're all idiots, Holly said. I still hope that they write all this as a joke to laugh. Which site? It's not just one site, there are many of them. They go to sites with sex stories every night. They read the stories and write terrible comments under some of them. What are you saying? So George sits at the computer every day and reads sexy stories? Lucy couldn't believe her ears. Yes, I read a few of these stories and their comments. I signed up for one of those sites to keep an eye on Harry. But to tell you the truth, I also found a few stories that I liked. Holly. Lucy, don't react like that. We're alone. Holly grinned. Lucy smiled too. So, are there any good stories? Lucy asked with interest. I didn't like most of them. But it's interesting that a lot of the stories our cavemen slandered were actually pretty hot. Shocking, but hot. Interesting. What are they talking about? Mostly about unfaithful wives. 
Oh, so they are jealous. I mean to us. Lucy, you're not so naive. Stop pretending like that when he's not around. Lucy smiled again. Then make me an account. I want to read it too. I'm not sure this is a good idea. You might get caught, and then you'll turn me in. I swear I won't get caught, and I won't admit it even if this happens. Then we'll create a male profile for you, like me. This way they won't be suspicious if you comment on their stories. I write to annoy them. She had a charming, evil grin on her face. Holly, maybe he's ruining my life because of you. This could be true. Don't worry, I'm not the only one making fun of these idiots. Can you believe they think these stories are real? They are so stupid that they don't suspect when the same author writes another story where he already changes his orientation. I don't believe it. Have you read stories like this? I was curious what else this author writes. Overall, not too bad. Isn't that disgusting? There wasn't anything particularly nasty, just one woman's thoughts about another. This is even worse. What if you get confused? I wouldn't read something like that if I were you. If I get confused, I'll knock on your door. They laughed loudly and nervously. Since Holly was a small, beautiful redhead, Lucy would probably get aroused if even the slightest thought crossed her mind. But she didn't have them. That evening Lucy and Holly's fun began. They had their own group, and they invited Dan's wife, Shirley, to join it. Shirley didn't agree to be the man on that site, so she became a young married woman. She wanted to drive Dan crazy. Holly didn't like this very much. She was afraid that this might make the guys, especially Dan, suspicious. Holly told them their husband's nicknames on that site. She learned this when she first saw Harry leave the site open on his computer, which was not password protected. She read all their messages, finding their nicknames. She found the others with whom they corresponded on the site. She figured out their husband's nicknames by comparing scheduled comments in their chat with those sent on the site. After she found the first one, the others were easy to spot. Dana's nickname was DDDDD Man, her husband Harry's creative nickname was HHHH Heman, and George's was GGGG Ghost. Lucy chose Longman 123456. Holly chose XXX underscore 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 Homan underscore underscore XXX, and a few days later Shirley wanted to take the nickname SSSS Shemin, but Holly stopped her. They weren't geniuses, but they might have suspected something. When Shirley insisted, Holly convinced her by saying that it was a nickname for someone who was both male and female. She ended up choosing Shopgirl Thatspencher who was Munayanshit. They laughed long and loud when they saw this nickname. Later that night, George read Dan's comment. He laughed at this comment. Then I thought that Dan had gone too far because they hated the bull just like their husband. Of course, the worst of all was a woman of easy virtue. GGGG ghost, you are a disgrace to society. Damn idiot. If you were at least half a man, your wife wouldn't wander off to the left. George liked his comment when he reread it before sending it. It would definitely hit that guy's nerves. But he felt restless for no reason. Perhaps because of the words of the writer's wife in the story that he could not satisfy her, and that it was because of this that she found a real man. It might seem similar to his own inability, deep down. A few minutes later, there was a comment from Harry. HHHH Heyman, this is nonsense. How can you not understand that your wife was with someone else? Admit that you knew it then. George thought Harry was a little dense. His words attacked the story more than the author himself. And the author has already said that he suspected something was wrong. What a fool, he continued reading, the other guys sending messages as they had agreed. Anonymous, first of all, you tried to hide your wife's name in the beginning, first calling her Rhonda and then changing her to Dawn. Do you even read what you write? Damn writer, we all know your wife is Dawn now. He was right about the author's laziness. He didn't even bother to reread the text before sending it. Anonymous, were you drunk when you posted this story in this category? It belongs in the horror thriller category, not married couples smut. Don't send stories like this here again, pathetic loser. Then another comment appeared. Longman 123456, 
you are an idiot anonymous in the description of the category indecencies of married couples it says unfaithful wives husbands willing cuckolds and other intrigues of married people can't you read a small paragraph if you don't like these topics what are you doing here george hated this longman one two three four five six he was definitely another weakling for defending the author he probably also wanted someone to have sex with his wife George, Dan, Harry, and their site buddies couldn't figure out what these sites and categories were all about. Harry guessed that this category was just for such stories and for those who liked to read them. But he didn't like that such a category existed at all. He didn't care what the description said. He didn't even want to think about how he would feel if Holly cheated on him, and he didn't want those stories to even exist. She was the only thing he valued in his life. He loved her with all his heart. They all thought that if such stories exist, then one day it will become normal for married couples to do such things. What if other wives read this and want to try it in real life? They decided that the category description didn't matter. This is a category about married people and married women need to stay away from such things. Another comment appeared xxx underscore 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 homan underscore underscore xxx d d d d d man do you think that running after a married woman and interfering with a happy marriage is normal shame on you you are a disgrace to society george felt terrible because this xxx underscore 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 homan underscore underscore xxx was right he thought the same thing dan screwed up with that comment the good thing is that this site allows users to delete their comments within 24 hours. Dan deleted his comment a few minutes later. Then a comment from that bastard Longman 123456 appeared again. Longman 123456, DDDDD man, something happened with your comment. But don't worry, I copied it before it disappeared. Here he is. Please. Crap. These guys deliberately attacked them. These are probably the writer's friends, the losers and their wives united against them. Surely they correspond with each other or with other perverts in order to find bulls who will sleep with their wives. Bastards. They started discussing it in the chat and decided to fight back the next day. They spent their time attacking the writer, Jay, and the story. The writer read their comments, laughing to himself. Jason, the author's real name, also showed them to one of his friends, and they both laughed. They had no idea why these idiots suddenly started acting like rabid dogs, but they didn't care. It was fun. I guess this DDDD guy's wife is clearly not on his level, and he's panicking that some average guy will sweep her off her feet with just a smile. Jason's friend smiled with disdain. Maybe. I think he's still not sure how he even managed to find a woman who agreed to marry him. Any man with the slightest bit of self-confidence wouldn't take it all so personally. Jason was right. All of Dan's friends wondered how Shirley married him. Even Shirley herself thought about it sometimes. He wasn't that bad in the beginning, but over time he became a pathetic bigot, and they almost stopped having sex. His situation was even worse than George's. She's been frustrated lately. They had a secret. Their story was not much different from the story of Lucy and George. Dan waited a long time for her to accept him as a boyfriend, and then Shirley cheated on Dan one day while they were engaged and got pregnant. Dan couldn't leave her and was by her side when she got rid of her pregnancy. When he found out that she had been dating a young married lawyer for the last few months, he had a nervous breakdown. He knew he had to leave, but during this period she acted like she didn't really care. It was unbearable for him to realize the fact of her betrayal, but what tormented him even more was how little she valued him. She didn't care that she could lose him. He couldn't leave her because she was too sexy and her confidence made him realize that this was the best option he had in life. He convinced himself that she was remorseful, thinking that she simply couldn't show him her emotions. This was his way of surviving in this relationship. He stayed with her, pretending that nothing had happened. It only took two weeks for him to swallow his principles and the words he spoke to her. Finally, when he told her he had found a doctor for the procedure, she told him she was considering keeping the baby. 
While Dan was trying to figure out if she was joking or not, she said that they could tell everyone that it was his child. They had a lot of fights. She told him that he was free to leave if he wanted. She loved the lawyer and wanted to have his child. She didn't say it directly to Dan, but it was obvious. When the lawyer found out that she was pregnant with his child, he called her and said that he did not want to see her anymore and did not want this child. This made her behave more rationally, her self-esteem dropped, and she saw Dan as the only way out of the situation. She didn't look like Lucy, she didn't worry about her future, but she had a calculating mind. She weighed her options. Dan, with all his money, wasn't such a bad choice. From his point of view, she repented of her mistake and was returning to common sense and logic. Dan was confident that Shirley was no longer acting so distant with him, which meant she was ready to get back to the way things were. He found himself pleading with her to convince her of the need to get rid of the pregnancy. In the end, she agreed. Dan didn't know that she had made this decision when her lawyer left her, before they even got married. She simply gave Dan a fight that he had to win in the end, so that he would continue to behave normally. Dan never acted against her will for a single day. She knew how to make him believe that he made all the decisions himself. Since then, he has become very sensitive to the topic of betrayal. A wife who became pregnant by another man. This was his biggest nightmare. It's a good thing he didn't know that Shirley went to see a lawyer several times after she got rid of her pregnancy. She hoped that he would divorce his wife and accept her. But he cut it all off when he got tired of having sex with her. When he left her again, Shirley and Dan had been married for over a year. Dan had no idea about it, but one day Shirley almost stopped him at the last second when he was about to have sex with her. If she was sure that he wouldn't suspect, she would have let him. Shirley did not respect Dan and found him annoying more often than not. But he had money and was often away from home, so she didn't really care. She had several short flings with strangers during her marriage. She loved sex, and Dan was far from satisfying her. When Shirley joined the site, the first thing she did was find Lucy's message containing Dan's message and she responded with great enthusiasm. Shop Grothat Spencer Hubis Munayanchit, Dam Longman 12. You're probably an idiot who can't function properly when you need to. But I like your attitude, you look like a real man. I'd love to spend a weekend with you for my husband's money. Holly called Shirley. Are you crazy? What if he finds out? Come on, he couldn't do it once. But I think he still remembers, because I gave him a scandal then. Don't do such things, you attack our husbands, and we will deal with Dan. Okay, calm down, girl. I won't. Dan and George hated shop girl more than they hated Longman and Homan. She was a woman of easy virtue, and her husband probably had no idea how low she was. They attacked her message, but received no response. They spent several months like this. The girls suffered from the wrath of their husbands in their daily lives, but it was worth it. They knew that their husbands at home would punish them when the girls hit them back on the site. But the realization that they were the ones who made these losers suffer was funny. During this period, they completely lost respect for their husbands. Reading their comments, the girls realized how pathetic they were. They talked about things that were far from their capabilities and reality. The only one who made his wife happy was Harry, and he didn't write such things. The rest of the incompetent losers acted like they were macho men in real life. Even worse, they acted as if they understood anything about women, sex, or relationships. They accused all writers of not knowing anything about women, but they themselves had no sexual experience when they began dating their wives. Dan paid prostitutes every month to fill the void that Shirley left in him during their engagement. But this emptiness did not disappear anywhere. However, Women of easy virtue were smart enough not to ridicule him. George has never been with another woman. He didn't kiss anyone except Lucy. He didn't even try. They acted very confident and smug around their wives, but their comments and efforts on the site showed their real faces. It was sad for the girls, but they also knew that their husbands deserved to be unhappy, and it made them feel better to see them that way. As they watched them spiral out of control, 
girls began to realize wife value, or more generally, the value of a woman to these guys. They didn't respect women, that was obvious. But it was also clear that they were very vulnerable to the idea that their wives might be interested in another man. It was a funny contradiction. The more they ignored or abused their wives at home, the harsher the girls' comments on the site became. They purposefully hit their sore spots. Shirley even texted Dan without listening to the other girls. They didn't even suspect that it was a real controlled weapon. Shop girl Thats Bencher Hoobies Moon Ion Shit, D D D D D man, I advise you to find a bull for your wife so that you at least have a son to raise. This will be your project to create another fanatic like you. I see you have too much free time to waste it here reading stories you don't like. Obviously, you can't get her to go to bed with you. At this point, the other girls started calling Shirley. It was a difficult day for Dan, and he did not respond to this message. The others mentioned him in the chat, but he pretended he didn't care. Harry was the only one who wasn't particularly attacked. This angered Dan even more. He posted in their group chat, targeting Harry. Dan, you write like a wimp, Harry. Longman 123 and Homan never answer you. And this fat woman, she never attacks you the way she attacks me or George. Well, except for the last message. But mostly they're both aiming at me. Harry, what can I do? I am writing as we planned. Harry noticed this himself, and he was pleased that he was not bothered. These bastards didn't hold back their words and hit the mark every time. They knew how to get under a man's skin. Plus, he didn't want to write aggressively. Harry believed in karma and didn't want to get himself and Holly into trouble. Too much pride or harsh words are big troubles. Holly was his world, and he knew she could find another man if she wanted. He knew how lucky he was that she loved him. But Dan, George, and Harry still couldn't understand one thing about these stories. One of their favorite writers, whom they had previously attacked, published a new story. It told how he and his wife went on vacation and how she was seduced by a hotel worker. Witnessing this broke the husband, but he did not have the courage to confront either his wife or the man. George was the first to read this story. He thought that the writer and his wife had gotten rid of their previous bull mentioned in another story. But he wasn't sure because the author used a different name for his wife. Perhaps she finally kicked him out and married someone else. The interesting part concerned the description of life after they returned home. There were paragraphs in which the writer described how he went to a cafe to think about what had happened. He wrote, I realized that all this time I had been staring at the ugly blue vase on my desk, trying to count the pink flowers on it. And then I realized that these are not flowers at all, these are female organs. George froze. He knew this cafe. It was on the main street next to his house. They discussed these vases on each table with the owner, who told them that they were musk thistles, but the artist who painted them was a good friend of his, who was not much of a painter. They laughed after he said that his friend had fooled them. The cafe was called Thistle. He sent a message to the others and invited them to have coffee. When they were all at the cafe, he sent them a link and told them to read the story. Half an hour later, their eyes turned to the vase, and Dan exclaimed, Damn it! But how? Crap! George began to act like a detective. Let's start from here and somehow find this guy. So what then? asked Harry. We'll show him, Dan spat. Are you crazy? What did he do to you? Harry didn't understand. Don't make me talk to Harry. I know what you did. What? Harry and George asked at the same time. Okay, you asked for it yourself. He's doing. George, we can sleep with the enemy. It's not like we're sleeping together, so. George tried to get rid of the image in his head. You know what I mean. What's wrong with that? I like... I like pleasuring my wife, too, Harry tried to defend himself. Come on. Dan turned to the window. He convinced himself not to do it after talking with Dan, but he liked it. Talking about it made him want to do it again, so he changed the topic back to being a writer. Okay, here's how we'll do it. We'll be spending more time here and keeping an eye on the regulars to come up with a list of possible suspects. And how do we do this? 
Do you think a short story writer will look like a writer? With round glasses, a goatee, a cardigan, and a scarf? Anyone can write them. Harry wasn't so keen on George's plan. Dude, statistically, he must be educated not to get bored after writing dozens of pages. And we know that he must be the one who likes, or at least the one who has come to terms with the fact that his wife is a woman of easy virtue for another guy. Can you imagine some Joe the plumber writing a story like that? I can't imagine him sitting in this cafe either. Harry remained a skeptic. They couldn't even imagine that a writer might not be the main character of his stories. Dan, George needed support. I agree, we can try for a few weeks. If he comes here, I'm sure we'll notice this weakness. Harry didn't want to be left out. He didn't care about the writer. He didn't care about the writer, but he enjoyed the time spent in the company of friends. Then we'll keep an eye on the cafe. At first, they started going there and spending their days in the cafe. They neglected their work. Their employees were coping with the stores, but as calls for critical issues increased, they began to create a duty schedule. Within weeks, they had a very short list of suspects based on questionable criteria. One of the reasons was that a man was reading a book, another was sitting with a laptop, and a third was looking out the window all the time, apparently thinking about how his wife cheated on him. Every night they chatted about their suspects, trying to find similarities with the writer. Finally, Holly discovered their correspondence and forwarded it to other girls. They couldn't believe what their husbands were doing. It was crazy. They first thought about alerting the writer through the site's message system. But then they decided not to contact the stranger and came up with another way to distract them. Because their husbands were very prolific readers, they continued to read other stories by the writer or new similar stories on the site. One day, when they were all together in a cafe, Dan exclaimed, Hey, one of these bastards just posted a story about Homan. In the category, Indecency of Married Couples. Show me, George grabbed Dan's laptop. Our new patriarch, Dan, it's clear what this story is about. George muttered as he typed something on the keyboard. What are you writing? Posting a comment about the story. Idiot, this is my account. Use your computer. I'll post it as soon as I read it. This bastard bites. I don't want to give him another chance to make me look like a clown. He's right, Harry agreed. They all started reading the story. She turned out to be terrible. She was everything they hated most, and it was written quite well. It contained descriptions of marriage, wife and husband, making each of them empathize to the core. These descriptions came before anything significant happened in the plot. They were especially struck by the part about how the wife first noticed her new neighbor and her cheeks turned red with embarrassment. They forgot why they were here. They forgot about everything. George started typing on his laptop again. What are you doing? Have you finished reading the story yet? Dan asked. I don't need to finish reading. I don't want to read further. He then posted a comment. Dan refreshed the page to see the comment. It was good that this site did not moderate comments before publishing. This allowed the argument to escalate quickly due to instant reactions. GGGG ghost, what nonsense. It took me two pages to realize that you're just an asshole. It's obvious that you don't know anything about women. Dude, he's married, Dan said. What if he's lying? I think he's a liar. George's eyes sparkled as if he had made an important discovery. He started typing again. Here. GGGG ghost, you lying bastard. I'm sure this story is about your mother. You are right. His father is that weakling, Dan agreed. They then continued reading the story. He turned out to be the embodiment of their worst nightmares. The wife cheated on her husband for several months. He did not suspect anything. She forced him to do various things to her after her dates. She became pregnant, and they gave birth to a child not knowing who the real father was, and the neighbor, who was actually the biological father, sometimes came to their house, spending time with his husband. See, this homan is probably this neighbor's son, George exclaimed. When his husband finally caught them, Harry left a comment. Dan hit the table as hard as he could when he read the part where the husband chickened out and the wife talked to him as if he was to blame for what happened. 
She accused him of not being able to love her, of ignoring her needs, and of generally being the reason she cheated. At this point, the three friends, especially Dan and George, fell silent for a moment, as they usually did at such moments in such stories. They tried to get rid of thoughts that reminded them of their own lives and marriages. All these stories seem to tell them that women have their own needs, and that husbands have a responsibility to meet those needs. All these ideas seemed vicious to them, their goal was to destroy the institution of marriage. But they never discussed this part among themselves. They were probably afraid that one of them would say, a man who cannot constantly satisfy his woman is not a man at all, or something like that. George and Dan were almost completely incompetent in bed, and Harry could barely cope. But he did everything he could to make Holly happy. Any man could have this problem, and it was not unusual, but they probably wouldn't feel so anxious if they weren't attacking everyone's manhood or constantly talking about what it means to be a real man. Each of them wanted to continue to believe that he was a real man, so they ignored this point again. This was followed by the wife's demands and threats. They all started talking at the same time, raising their voices. Do you see this bitch? She's been sucking his blood for years, and now she's acting like it's worth something in itself. Dan exploded. I'd like to see her come crawling back when the neighbor abandons her and their bastard, Harry picked up. Their expressions changed after Harry's comment, including Harry himself. They felt uncomfortable with the thought that it was her lover who would ultimately take revenge on her for her betrayal. They all knew that the husband was destroyed and nothing could be changed, even if he burned his wife and house, as one of their friends suggested. Each of them thought, damn bitch, they were right in their thoughts, but again, it was just a story. Their problem was not how they felt, they had reasons for these feelings. And even if a man has no trauma from the past, it is quite natural for any man to be afraid of his wife's betrayal. It was more than just emotions. It was a burden that society placed on men. A man's woman was his honor. Moreover, nature itself played a role in how men perceived it. Sex was something that one person crossed the boundary of another, like an intrusion. When it all comes together, cheating becomes a nightmare for most men, even more so than women. But their problem wasn't that they felt that way. Their problem was how they reacted to it. How they lived their lives. How they never changed anything in their lives. How they continued to sit on their marriages, ignoring the opportunity to make those marriages better. Their problem was that they were not looking for someone who could truly love them to spend their life with. Harry did everything he could and managed to make Holly love him. Dan made the wrong choice, and it seemed like he couldn't build something good with his wife, even if he tried his best. What about George? He had a chance. He could make Lucy love him with all her heart. He could have been her king if only he had cared enough, instead of following the stereotypes laid down by his father. All this had nothing to do with betrayal or stories. They lived their lives only on the surface. Awareness of this problem did not seem possible for them in the near future. George remained silent as Dan and Harry discussed what the husband should have done in the story, because he was so angry. He read the next paragraph. Damn cheater. She accuses him of leaving university because of him. He worked hard to make her comfortable, and she's trying to twist reality. This moment hit George hard. This conversation took place several times at their home. All the women were so ungrateful. Dan grinned in disgust. His wife told him something similar once, too, even though she didn't really want to go to college herself. Then the usual parts for such stories began. But Dan and Harry were a little puzzled, so they went back to the previous paragraphs. There was not a word in them that the husband worked hard to provide comfort for his wife or that the wife needed him. They didn't even know what this husband and his wife did in life. Usually such details were mentioned in stories. Of course, the writers added them because they wanted the scale of the wife's betrayal to be huge, to make readers feel worse when they empathize with a husband. After all, the purpose of a story is to make the reader feel something. In the following pages, the neighbor continued to enjoy his wife. While the husband continued to work hard, they were forced to clean the house, prepare the wife for sex before they went to the bedroom, and so on. 
It was disgusting. We better find this guy. I want to beat him first, and then find out the address of that neighbor. You're right, that was the worst of all the stories. None of the three friends had ever hit people in their lives. George once thought about ambushing Tony and his brothers so that the five of them could attack him. But he wasn't sure they could defeat him, so he changed his mind. Interestingly, there was actually little sex in this story. Shirley wrote some really hot scenes that she found arousing, but the girls decided to tone it down and delete most of them. They thought they would feel bad for sending such graphic content. Interestingly, when the girls edited the story and removed the sex scenes, it became even harder for the guys to read, because now they were imagining their wives walking into that bedroom while they were waiting outside, and it seemed more real, as if it were real life. Not seeing what was happening there, they endured the described sounds, suffering to the limit. Harry almost cried at this moment. His Holly would never do such a thing. He will do everything to make her happier. Dan wrote a comment. Dddddd man, you are not a man. No man would put up with such crap. A real man would have kicked her out with her bastard after beating this guy good. The girls were at Shirley's house at that moment. When she read this comment out loud, her face took on a strange expression. What was that? Holly asked. Nothing. Come on, you were thinking something. Lucy wanted to know too. Nothing. He's just a complete hypocrite. I can say that for sure. The others looked at each other. Surely? Okay, but this will stay between us. And she told them what happened before their wedding. She didn't mention the part that continued after the wedding. Oh, that's why you insisted on changing the paragraph. Holly remembered when they were editing the story a few days ago. Shirley smiled an evil smile. I didn't want him to feel that bad. A small change might have helped him not see himself completely in that character. But after reading his comment, I think it was a mistake and should have been left as is. Holly looked at her thoughtfully. I think you did the right thing. This is a trauma for him. Maybe you made him like this. He still feels wounded. No, he was never a good guy, not even close to your Harry. Harry is the only person among them. Yes, I still love him, but sometimes he annoys me. Sorry, girls, but your husbands are not the best company for my naive Harry on walks. Holly smirked, and the other girls painfully agreed. She also blushed, thinking about her Harry. He deservedly had a hot evening ahead of him. And I added about university because George did the same thing to me. After that day, my life was under his control. It was Lucy. I read an article on this topic. Any man who tries to suppress his woman suffers from a serious inferiority complex. He's afraid you'll leave if you get wings. Let them be small. Let them be yours, right? The other girls agreed with disgust. So what do we do now? Shirley asked. I can barely restrain myself from answering Dan. Please don't, Holly said. The last thing we need is to be discovered. I suggest waiting and checking their messages. If they're really looking for this guy, we'll try to warn him. What do you say? Lucy was afraid that they might harm this man. Of course, if it's even a guy. Everyone laughed, pointing fingers at each other. Lucy was right. The following week, Holly's story was subject to constant attacks from trolls on the site. Shirley and Lucy suffered from their husband's bad moods. George especially was very depressed and angry. Lucy and the other girls hated George, especially after reading his last comment on her story. GGGG ghost, all women are women of easy virtue. Only a strong man can keep one in check. You couldn't. That evening, Lucy spat in George's food before serving it to him. A few weeks later, Lucy called Holly. She sounded tense. Holly, I'm coming to see you. Call Shirley too. Wait, what happened? I'll tell you everything in ten minutes. Lucy began to speak as everyone gathered. He left the laptop on when he was called from the store. I checked his account, all the comments he posted. They were the same. And that's all you called us for? Shirley was not interested in this news. Of course not. Then I found the messages he was sending and receiving on the site. And, 
Holly could almost guess what they were texting with the other idiots about. I found out that two days ago, he sent a message to this writer. I took a picture of him. Show us. The girls quickly surrounded her and sat on the arms of her chair. Hey, you little worm. I know that you dream of finding someone who will satisfy your wife. Why don't we meet? I will take care of her right in front of your eyes, telling you what I think of you. Damn it, Shirley screamed. Yeah, I think he's trying to find him and hurt him. What if George is pursuing his fantasy? Holly asked. Everyone fell silent. It was difficult to understand. I would say he wouldn't do it that way. Not with her husband involved. Lucy wasn't sure about fantasy. What if he wants to be what they call a bull? Holly asked naively. Lucy's nervous laughter interrupted the argument. George could not satisfy the wife he still loved and desired, let alone another woman. Even if he found it exciting, he wouldn't last long. It was always like this with him, starting from the first months of their relationship. When he was crazy about her, everything ended in disaster. Okay, let's say he's after him after all, Holly said. She didn't want Lucy to feel bad about her other options. What should we do? Lucy was very worried. We can warn him, Shirley suggested. What if he sets him up and hurts George? I don't want this. We have to be careful. Shirley wanted the writer to set up both George and Dan to beat them up. Lucy said it because she felt she had to. But after she saw the kind of person he really was and what she was going through in her marriage, part of her wanted him to get hurt. Besides, there was still the possibility that he might be ready to have sex with another woman. Let's think a little more, we'll decide later, Lucy said as she stood up. After Lucy left, Shirley said, I have an idea, I think. I'll tell you later if I can collect my thoughts. And she also left. Jason and his friend Eddie read the message sent by George. Eddie laughed, but Jason didn't. He read the message over and over again. Dude, can you trust this guy? Yes, an interesting specimen, Jason was still thinking. What will you write to him? Will you answer? Eddie thought of a lot of insults that he could write to this idiot who believed that all the stories were real and so on. Jason said, I don't know, I'll think about it. Eddie was disappointed. He wanted to play with this guy. But Jason could be right. This was not a normal person. He was clearly worried about something. Provoking him might be a bad idea. They didn't want him to hurt his wife or the other unfortunate people who were forced to live with him. As he left Jason's apartment, contemplating his reaction, he suddenly wondered if Jason had been aroused by the message. After all, if he writes such stories, such fantasies could excite him. Eddie hoped Jason didn't get aroused by the message. That would be wrong in so many ways. Then he remembered his other stories in all categories. He couldn't enjoy them all. A few days later, George was sitting in front of the computer, looking at new stories. But his thoughts were somewhere far away. He was still thinking about the message he sent. He had no doubt that the writer was a cowardly henpecked man, someone who would let his wife sleep with someone just to get material from it. He decided to send another message. Guys like that probably needed something more brutal to respond to they were submissive themselves, after all. George felt a little uneasy because he was deviating from his usual behavior. He did not approve of anything like this related to his wife's debauchery. But this guy deserved such abuse, and George did it for a good cause. He was going to find this guy if he answered. The next morning, he found a response from the writer in his mailbox on the site. Your messages make me uncomfortable. I would appreciate it if you would stop sending them, Jay. Discomfort? He probably has an itch, George thought and quickly answered. I know what's bothering you. You took all this time to write this message, right? He probably imagined me in his bedroom with your wife. I'm asking for the last time. Do you want to see me humiliate your wife in front of you? He borrowed this idea and phrase from one of the stories he hated most. But he changed the proposal before sending it. He was almost sure that this would be the end of their communication. Then a new message arrived. I don't trust you. George was very surprised to see this. He became interested. The writer was willing to let George sleep with his wife if only he trusted him. And George typed, 
trust me, you won't like what I say. Reverse psychology, baby, George thought. One could argue whether this is true or not, because what he wrote was exactly what he thought the writer wanted to hear. But George was sure that this was a cunning move, since what he wrote did not correspond to what was required for trust. It seemed like a smart move, but again, it wasn't his idea. This was one of the stories he rated lowest. This time, there was no immediate answer. After lunch in his office at the store, he received his answer. What you say sounds sincere, that is, I understand that your intentions are not good, but that's all. But when I said trust, I meant that I didn't want to meet in person. This bastard walked straight into a trap. George thought about his next message. This was an important moment. What about your wife's previous relationships? You didn't even know what those men were like. Jason quickly responded to this. But I was not involved in the selection process. George laughed at the comment and laughed even more after he sent his message. Yes, no one asked your opinion. Your wife chose. Get out and let the missus talk to me. He didn't like this conversation. He turned into someone else when he read and wrote things like that. George received no replies for two days. One day, after the usual short sex with Lucy, he finally received the message. Hi, G. I'm M. J.'s wife. Do you know you're very rude? Crap. George was very excited. This loser told his wife about these messages, and she started messaging him from her account. Her account was called Mintihua underscore XXX. Did the name start with M? Mary? Maggie? Molly? Miranda? What does HW mean, housewife? He had to stay in character. He wrote, Rude to your wimpy husband, even rougher to you if you want. She asked him what he looked like, and he exaggerated his features a little. So, G, are you married? Why are you asking? I would like everything to be mutual between us. George read this message probably ten times. Things were getting serious. He didn't plan anything with his wife. But at that moment, he almost forgot about the writer. This conversation was hot as hell, and something might have worked out for him if he could. He didn't know if he wanted to tell her the truth. But he decided that this would make the writer even more unhappy, knowing that George was enjoying his wife while his own wife was waiting for him at home. Clean and decent. Yes, I'm married, but I'm not like your husband. My woman is only mine, and his woman will also become mine. He wasn't sure if this was a good idea. He insulted her too, and she could change her mind. Oh, you're a real caveman. Will you mark me as your woman too? George had never encountered anything like this before. It was incredibly exciting. He hoped the writer was already suffering from this, hoped she made him read it. So what's the plan? George realized that this behavior turned her on. Jay is hesitant about you. He had never experienced me being with someone for the first time. So I will meet you in advance. If we suit each other, we'll see what happens next. Do you agree? Yes, when and where. At this moment, George wanted nothing more than to sleep with this woman. There is one cafe, Thistles. You can find it on the internet. Tomorrow at 14 o'clock. I will no longer show my messages to Jay. I want to leave him in the dark. I will be wearing red shoes and a white blouse over a skirt. Great, I'll be there. I don't have red shoes, but I will have a green umbrella. I'll call you Minty. He thought about telling Dan about this so that he could follow the woman and find out where she lived. But that would mean refusing to have sex with her, and he really wanted to sleep with her. She herself will bring him to her home after a couple of meetings, but she had to like him. She should have been pleased with him. He was going to buy pills to make sure he could satisfy her. He quickly went out to get the pills. When Lucy returned home, she found George's computer turned on. The browser was closed, but when she opened it and entered the website address, she instantly gained access to his account. Apparently, it told the browser or website to remember it. She read all these messages and was shocked to see that George was corresponding with both the writer and his wife. What if the writer suspects something, and it is actually a man or the writer himself pretending to be his wife? Such thoughts never even occurred to George. 
Lucy called Holly and told her to call Shirley. She showed them pictures of the messages, and they all suspected that George was planning to sleep with this woman, unless Dan and Harry were involved. They thought exactly the same as George. One of them could be there to follow the woman and get her address. There was only one way to be sure. They decided to keep their husbands under control. Shirley should have told Dan that she needed him to go shopping with her. Holly should have asked Harry to stay with her to help around the house. Lucy had the most difficult task. She had to keep an eye on George, stay outside the cafe, and see if he tried to do something. She wasn't going to stop him, but she was going to take pictures of everything. Shirley asked if she wanted to stop him. Lucy replied that even if it turned out to be something else, she would have every right to expose him. He was planning to meet the woman after these messages. She could possibly even divorce him and gain a lot from that divorce with the evidence already in place. They didn't have a clear idea of how these things worked. They were just speculating. Initially, Lucy wanted to prevent this. But after discussing it with the girls, she decided that she didn't want to get involved because he would be angry at her if it ruined their plans unless he really had any intentions of changing her. Finally, she got angry and decided that she wanted to know if he was going to cheat on her with this woman. She didn't feel jealous, she was simply consumed by rage. This would make her decision to break up with him very easy. She was not happy with her marriage or her husband, and if he betrayed her, she would make the decision easily. She didn't care about taking his money. She just wanted to say that this was her destiny. No, I will divorce this bastard if he cheats on me. I've had enough. Shirley and Holly felt bad when their husbands readily agreed to their requests without showing the slightest suspicion. George was alone without his company. This bastard was in the mood for sex. They wanted to lie to Lucy, but couldn't when she called and asked about their husbands. Lucy was waiting in a small burger place opposite the same place where George was supposed to meet the woman. She saw the writer's wife go inside. She was a very attractive woman, long legs, blonde hair, and a tight skirt that emphasized her firm buttocks. For the first time, Lucy felt jealous. George will definitely like what he sees. She thought about making a scene to stop this, but she resisted. Then George appeared. This bastard is wearing his best suit. He was clearly trying to please her. But there was something strange in his behavior, some kind of confidence. He behaved the same way as in his messages. Or perhaps he truly despised such people and didn't care what she thought of him. But his outfit said otherwise. She watched them introduce themselves and have lunch by the window, carrying on an endless conversation. Lucy left the burger joint and took a few photos, as much as she could enlarge the image on Holly's camera. She then returned to the cafe and continued to wait, ordering another Coke. When they got up and left the cafe, she also got up and left. They walked. She began to worry that they might be in the car. She looked around and was disappointed to see that there was no taxi nearby. But it turned out that they were going to a nearby motel. She followed them and took a photo of them as they paid for the room and entered the room. Lucy cried with anger and other feelings. She had never cried so much for Tony. Tony had never made her this unhappy. She called Holly and told her everything. She didn't want to say much and quickly hung up. She hated him. His only merit was his love for her and behavior in accordance with his concept of a real man, which was clearly not enough. He was neither handsome nor smart and did not know how to behave well with people or with her. She had always fooled herself into thinking that he was tied to his principles about what a man of the house should be. She never thought that he was a worthy husband because he ignored her physical and spiritual needs, was lazy, and would not have been able to earn money if it were not for that store, which, by the way, was given to him by his family. All he had to do was maintain his pitiful and few principles. Remembering the messages he wrote on that site, she became even angrier. He insulted other people as if he had even the slightest shred of their dignity and humanity. He thought he was protecting the morality of society, but he himself was the dirt of this society. Even bad people had more dignity than him. Even the people George hated the most, those losers who put up with what their wives did to them, were more sincere 
and at peace with themselves. Of course, Lucy didn't think these stories were real. She took advantage of George's lack of perception and thought in such a way as to cause him as much pain as possible. She wanted the writer and his friends to be in that room, waiting for him. She would like to see him come out of there with a broken nose. While Lucy waited outside, George didn't last long with the birder's wife. Marcia couldn't help but laugh at him. He hated this situation and thought that he should just leave, forget about it all. He wanted to be with his wife, where he felt like someone. But thanks to the pills, he was able to satisfy her a second time. He constantly insulted the writer and their marriage. He told her that he was now the head of their family, as well as his own, that Marcia was his bitch, that her husband was just a decoration, devoid of all the qualities of a real man. Things turned out surprisingly well for George, despite the terrible start. She was hot, and he wanted to meet her again. He asked her husband's name, and she replied, Jerry. Lucy waited for them to leave. She was amazed that they had been at the motel for over an hour. This infuriated her. He could never last more than twenty minutes in bed with her. She took a photo of them as they left. The timestamps on the photos were proof enough of his infidelity. She was going to find a good lawyer. She was already thinking about dealing with him right away when Holly called her. Lucy, what happened? Shirley just came to see me. Dan is home. She just called him from there. I sent Harry there too. They just came out. I have pictures and I'm going to punch him in the groin right now. Come on, girl, Holly said. But then Lucy heard someone else talking in Holly's background, and a second later, Shirley answered the phone. Don't do anything. Come here quickly. Let's discuss everything first. Fine. Lucy gave them another look of hatred and then walked back to Holly. When she arrived, she began to talk about what she saw in anger while crying. She talked and talked, and the girls listened to her silently, angry and feeling sad. When Lucy finished speaking, she took a deep breath and wiped her eyes. She looked like she was feeling better. She seemed calm. I think I've calmed down a little. You know, I'm even glad that this happened, because my life was boring, monotonous, and full of unpleasant conversations with him. I'll finish this, and I won't feel bad anymore. If this had not happened, I would have lived for many more years suffering from his idiotic company. I hate him, and it's like I hated him for a long time, I just didn't realize it. Shirley was the first to jump up and hug her. I'm glad you understand this. And honestly, I wish Dan would get caught doing something like that. I need a lawyer, Lucy was determined. Please wait a little while, let's figure out the best course of action, Shirley asked her, trying to calm her down. I can't be under the same roof with him anymore. I can kill him in my sleep. Lucy remained firm in her decision. I think he will definitely continue to message the writer. This will be additional proof for you. In the meantime, I will try to find the best lawyer to rip off all the money from him, even the store or house in the divorce. You will definitely get more than half of what you have. Just give me one week. We can sign up for some classes so you won't be at home when he's there. You will only see him at night. She's right. If you can carry on as normal, one week is quite a bit. Holly agreed with this approach. They both didn't want Lucy to do something hasty that she would regret later. Okay, the course idea is good. Let's do it. They signed up for an oil painting course and returned home as if nothing had happened. The last time Lucy checked his messages, she had changed the computer's power settings so it wouldn't go into sleep mode and she would have more access to his account. She checked his messages every time she was home without him, if he left the computer on or unlocked. George spent most of his time with Dan, continuing to act as if he was looking for a writer while hanging out at the cafe. Dan had no idea about George's parallel operation. George was more interested in having sex with Marcia than finding a writer. He didn't want it to be interrupted by the interference of his friends. Two days later, Marcia sent a message to George on the website. When they were together, she said it was too early to give him her phone number. Hey, stud. Hey, Marcia, did you miss me? He tried to look cool, but he became instantly horny. I've been thinking about you since that day. I missed you. 
I lacked a true alpha in my marriage. George felt great reading this. He was the alpha, not only in his marriage, but also in the marriage of this woman of easy virtue and her low-grade henpecked husband. She longed to be in bed with George again. He was wondering what happened after their previous meeting. What did your weakling Jerry say? Did you tell him everything? I'll tell you everything while I pleasure you. When and where? George thought about bringing the woman to his home while Lucy was away. But Harry or some other neighbor might have seen them, and the writer could find out where he lives before George finds out his address. Okay, when? After a while? I'll be there. He packed his laptop and quickly got ready. She looked incredible in her black dress. This time they had sex for several hours thanks to the new pills he found. She told him what happened that day. He had no idea I met you. I returned home and started kissing him. George didn't feel bad anymore. That wimp deserved it. He managed to make this writer his bitch too. He didn't want me to see you again. This time he was very jealous. I told him I want you, what I need. He's waiting for me there. This time he knows I'm with you. George became horny again, but he had an idea. You're a hot woman. I'll send him a message. Do you agree to this? I agree to whatever you want. You are my man. I obey you, and he obeys me. George had mixed feelings at this moment. This woman was her husband's worst nightmare, but she was the first and only woman who treated him the way he deserved. She knew the value of a real man. She knew how a woman should behave around her man. She understood that the most important thing was a man's pleasure. Squishy didn't enjoy it because he wasn't a man. He was a cuckold. He opened his laptop, placed it on the table in the room, and sat down on a chair. George felt like a king. George typed, feeling in seventh heaven. Finally, he felt like he deserved to feel. GGGG ghost, hey Jay, your wife is in the motel room with me right now. He immediately received a response to his comment, but it was a message, not a public comment. Hey, stop making public comments. You'll ruin my reputation. You promised that you can trust me. George laughed when he read this message. After they separated, he waited several hours before sending the message. He did not want to interfere with the writer's suffering in the hands of Marcia. She was his little helper in his mission to destroy the writer's life. George was constantly checking for new messages. Then he went to bed to get some rest. When Lucy got home, she checked his computer. She saw the message from the writer and started looking for George's comment. It was very difficult for her to restrain herself from boiling water and pouring it on his head while he was sleeping. She called Holly and told her she was on her way. Holly told her to call Shirley, but then added that Shirley was already with her. Lucy showed them pictures of the messages and said, I can't take it anymore, sorry girls. There was a short silence before Holly looked at Shirley and said, Are you going to tell her? What are you talking about? Lucy looked at Shirley, who looked awkward. She mentioned that she did something before you arrived. I want to hear the whole story. What? What did you do, Shirley? Lucy was worried, and a note of anger appeared in her voice. Okay. But that's a bit of a long story. Please listen to me until the end. Okay, said Lucy. Wait, I'll bring us beer. It'll be more interesting. Holly ran to the kitchen. Harry was right. She was so natural and beautiful. He was very lucky. When Holly sat down again, they both began to listen to Shirley without interrupting her. I created a new account on the site, and I sent a message to this Jay the writer George wrote to. What? Lucy screamed. Please listen to me. I did this to make sure that neither the writer nor George would get into trouble. Lucy said nothing, drank some beer, and waited for the rest of the story. I did it two days after we found out George had sent him a message. I told him that I was his stepsister and that I hated him. I told him how I found his messages and suggested that if he hated it too, I could help him have some fun with it. The girls looked at each other in surprise. He didn't trust me at first, but I assured him that his identity would remain a secret. He was interested and liked my plan. What's the plan? 
I told him to act hesitant at first because I was sure he was intrigued by the idea of letting George meet his wife. I didn't tell him to give up his fantasy, but I did warn him to be careful not to let George find out his identity and that his wife should be very careful too. When he agreed, I was going to tell him the rest of my plan, exactly how to pull it off, and he answered quite interestingly. She read the rest of their correspondence to the girls and fell silent, waiting for a reaction. Lucy couldn't find the words. Don't think I didn't care how you felt. I didn't know George would agree to this, but I thought I was doing you a favor. It's not up to you, Holly said, slightly angry with her. Lucy didn't react. And besides, I still don't know his real name. He told George he was hesitant about meeting in person. What if I still loved him? Lucy finally said, unable to restrain herself. Then you deserved what happened to you. Shirley was often harsh, but this time she was right. Keep going, Holly said. Both of them were not happy with her actions at that moment. Now I have perfect proof of his betrayal. I received the photos. And she showed them to Lucy. Lucy felt embarrassed. It was terrible to see the photographs. It was as if she were sharing her most intimate secrets with her friends. But there was that same mole. George had no chance to deny it. Shirley was right he couldn't deny it. But Lucy was furious. She wanted to hurt George. She wanted to ruin his life forever. The girls continued to discuss next steps. George met with Marcia several more times in the following weeks. She made him feel better every time. This was his first time experiencing something like this. This biological nonsense turned out to be no nonsense. The hormones or other chemicals in his body that were released were real. He knew this because Lucy couldn't stay away from him in those days. She kissed him for no reason and touched him. She was constantly by his side. One day she began to complain about the lack of something in their sex life. This was not very appropriate for a woman. George decided that she should be satisfied. Now he knows for sure that women need a man who can satisfy them. He was the head of the family and had the power to satisfy a woman. This was his responsibility. But what she insisted on was problematic. She wanted him to stop his taboo. She also said that Harry was doing this for Holly. He didn't like that kind of talk. He didn't want her to discuss it. But he knew how irresistible he had become, thanks to Marcia. George agreed. He used the pills to have sex with Lucy, too. One day, while he was sitting at his computer, Lucy came into the room and said, Hey, asshole, I'm leaving you. My lawyer will contact you shortly. Don't try to transfer the store to your family, otherwise I will demand more than the house. My lawyer hopes that you will try to make some kind of fraudulent transaction. You're a cheating bastard. George was shocked. Is she leaving him? Advocate? Shop? Wait, how did she know about his cheating? Lucy, what are you talking about? I know all your messages, all your comments and correspondence on this site. You are a disgrace to society. You're not a man and you're also stupid. Baby, this is not real. We were just trying to set up that idiot wimp. Shut up. Do you have any dignity? I know about you. I know about the hotel where you went. Lucy wanted to tell him about her account on that site, but didn't want to risk exposing her friends. He sat for several hours, not knowing what to think. Then he got angry. All this happened because of that writer. If he had not been a coward who sent his wife to another man, his marriage would not have failed. He sent the writer a message. You pathetic bastard. He didn't know why he was waiting so impatiently for a response from the writer. After all, this didn't solve anything. He wouldn't feel any better if he begged him not to do what he wrote. Then the answer came. Oh gee, not only are you stupid, but you have no dignity. I know something you don't know. By the way, I almost forgot to tell you that one of us actually tried the other one. George felt as if he had been hit on the head. He became furious and sent many messages, but received no response. He also sent messages to Marcia, but there was no response from her either. He didn't sleep for several days. I kept thinking about what the writer meant. What did he want to say? Did Marcia tell him something about George? What did he mean? He felt sick. He felt helpless. 
He didn't answer his calls when Dan and Harry tried to call him after hearing that Lucy had left him. He didn't open the door when Harry knocked for a long time. George tried calling Lucy several times, and she finally answered. Please, Lucy, give me another chance. I'm really sorry, I'll behave, I never wanted to cheat on you. I was just fascinated. Enough. I don't want to hear your pleas. I still have some things left, I'll come get them. I prefer you not to be there when I come. No, I'll wait for you. He was sitting in a chair when she arrived. He begged her not to leave him, but she didn't listen. He tried to explain why he was writing messages to this writer. Believe me, my only goal was to find him. I wanted to look him in the eye and insult him. That's it. But he turned out to be an even bigger pervert than I thought, so he sent his wife to me. They played with me. Nothing happened in the room, we just talked about him. You really don't understand, do you? He's not even married. This woman sent me your photos, you idiot. This woman was a woman of easy virtue who was hired by this writer to frame you. And she threw the photographs on his table. In fact, she was a woman of easy virtue, provided by a private detective who specialized in breaking up marriages. Usually this detective used it to seduce the husbands of his clients and quickly get incriminating evidence, rather than spy on them for weeks. But he charged for the work, as if for several weeks. Shirley contacted him and paid for his services so that both parties would remain anonymous to each other. Lucy was furious. You let him destroy us and our marriage. He looked at the photographs with his mouth open, like a complete idiot. He didn't even notice Lucy leaving the house. He was still trying to understand what happened to him. A minute later, only one thought remained in his head. How does she know that this writer is not married? Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. 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 Click to the next one.